it is another brand new week and welcome to another brand new episode of our weekly devotion with yours truly. Woo-hoo. Well, I read a story about two Italian uh, artists or sculpture by the name of uh, Augustino Di Tocio, Antonio and uh, Rosalino. Um, they were given this marble slab to do their sculpture work and they found that this, this, this marble slab wasn't any good for them. It, so they abandoned it, re- they rejected it and abandoned it in the backyard of their studio. Years later, a young uh, sculptor walked by the, the backyard of these two renowned uh, sculpture and found that, hey, they don't want it, I will take it because it's good for me. And he took it back and he sculpture the now famous Michelangelo's David. Well, if you ever felt abandoned, rejected, or forgotten, you are not alone. I believe most of us would have at one time in our life feel abandoned, rejected, and you know, perhaps been forgotten, myself included. Well, if we feel this way, the Bible says you must be patient. It is not you try to be patient. He says you must be patient and keep your hopes high for the Lord, for the day of the Lord is coming near. So while you are waiting, be patient and do some weight training. Not this weight training, this weight training, because the word of God says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. So while you are waiting, remember there's a power of yet. For instance, if you feel that I am not successful or you are not successful, then add on the word yet. I am not successful yet. I am not healed yet. I have not overcome yet. I am not being used by God yet. And to some, I am not married yet. The right one will come. Just be patient. Remember, God made everything beautiful in His time. His time is always perfect. And so while we are waiting, hey, trust the timing of God. We all know the story of Joseph. He was a favorite son of his dad who gave him this multicolored uh, clothes. And his, he, it, his other brothers got jealous of him and they threw him into the pit and left him to die there. And one of the brothers decided, you know, have a turn around and said, wait, well, don't, don't, let's not kill him. Let's make money out of him. Why not we just sell him to, uh, to the slave market? And at least he got something out of this guy. And so he was sold as a slave. And then he was, um, you know, he was uh, put in the household of Potiphar. Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him and Joseph rejected her and Joseph ran away and the wife of Potiphar had a piece of of his clothing and accused him of trying to rape her. And then Joseph was put in prison. In prison, he made friends with um, a baker and a uh, butler of the pharaoh. And, And then these two guys had a dream and Joseph was able to interpret the dream. Um, the butler was then released by the pharaoh and was reinstated in his position in the uh, in the palace. And before he left the prison, Joseph backed him and said and asked him, "If you ha- if you are with when you are with the pharaoh, can you can you ask a favor to to release me, please?" And that butler said, "Yes, I will do so. I will do so." And he left and he forgot it. One day. The pharaoh had a nightmare, a dream, and he was very disturbed by the dream. And then this butler remembered, oh, I have a friend when I was in prison. He could interpret dreams. And he told the pharaoh about it. And the pharaoh then summoned Joseph to his presence. And then, you know, he told Joseph his dream and Joseph was able to interpret the dream and said, oh, we'll be fine. If you plan well, there will be, there will be seven years of drought and famine. There will be another seven years of abundance. And the pharaoh was so impressed with Joseph that he pharaoh promoted Joseph as the prime minister of Egypt, the second highest ranking person in the entire country. But what a journey, what a journey. Some of us may be here, some of us may be here. You know, while you are here, the Bible says you must be patient. Be patient. And so while you're while you're waiting patiently, you know, in the meanwhile, less fret, 
more faith. Not less fret, not this fret, but less fret and more faith. Now, I'm not calling you to fake it until you make it. You know, we got called to fave it while you're waiting. Hey, have faith and trust in God's timing. Fave it until you make it. Be less cranky while you're waiting and exhibit more calm because when you are cranky, when you're angry and when you're anxious, it won't do you any good anyhow. So be less cranky, be more calm. And don't freeze yourself in the cold storage and just refuse to do any work while you're waiting. Don't sell yourself cheap as you know as those products that is found in the discount store. In the meanwhile, while you're waiting, pride yourself as a precious jewel of God. God is now you know putting you on hold and waiting for the right place and the right time for you to be used, just like Joseph. So we have to learn with dignity while we wait. Look up in the meanwhile chin up chin up chin up and look out and be ready when god says hey your time is now get ready and be ready in the snap of your finger you are all ready to do what god has called you to do so let your confidence be contagious not your anger not your anxiety not even the virus let your confidence be contagious and let it spread all right, remember this marble slab that was rejected? You know what? If you feel like you are this marble slab that has been abandoned and placed in some backyard, you know what? God can still use you. Just wait patiently. All right, so this week, I just know what you are going through. Wait patiently. If God can use someone like myself and Joseph and everybody else who were rejected, who were abandoned before, God can still use you. All right, look up, chin up, look out and be ready. Have a great week ahead. Okay.